Okay, I bought a uh, used minute mount plow for my 2000 Suburban. The wiring harness that came with it was from a 98 uh, Silverado or something like that, I can't remember. Uh, but this is the wiring harness that came with it, it was the 8275 Revision 15. And this video is about how I used just this wiring harness right here. And this one, of course. This is the uh, wiring harness for the solenoid. And uh, there's a lot of videos out there, so I'm not even going to touch on that. Um, but these are all the wires that are needed to operate the plow and the lights are contained right within this one wiring harness right here. Uh, it's your little six pin connector and it goes straight back down into your plow. And what I wanted to be, to be able to do is as soon as I plug my plow in, I wanted my headlights to go out and my plow lights to come on and to be able to control it like that. I added one wire to this right here. This wire feeds into one of the uh, relays and I'll show you that later. Uh, and it goes in through where the rest of the wire for the cab goes up to a toggle switch to for my high low beam on my plow. That's the only toggle switch I have right there. And I tapped into the red wire for the plows for the power for the uh, cab control so that it's fused and let's show you what I mean by what I hooked up Okay, now most of the wiring for this was done right underneath the hood. In the uh, power distribution center. I wish my camera would focus better. And this relay right here, the headlight relay, uh, I actually tapped into it for the relay right here that's controlling when the headlights go on and off. And this relay right here is uh, the high-low beam for the, for the plow headlights. And right in here, I'll show this better on the schematic inside. I've tapped into my trailer fuse for my parking lamps and my trailer right and left blinkers for my blinkers on the plow. And yeah, let's explain this. Okay, first let's uh let's do the blinkers here. And for that we need to go back to the wiring harness and <clears throat> what's going to be coming back out of this wiring harness is going to be a few wires here. The brown wire here, I don't know why they put it way down over here, but on mine this the brown wire goes to the uh, marker lights. There's a purple wire that goes to the right turn signal, a gray wire which goes to the left turn signal. The, one of these wires that come up and they put a, a little branch on there. Uh, it is ground, and that's for the relays. Uh, I didn't necessarily use that exactly, but I did in one relay. Uh, and the other one is power coming back up, and that they use those in, in this wire. See, it's branched off into two, and they use those for the relays as well. And the other two wires here, one's the low beam and one's the high beam. Okay? So we're going to start with the blinkers right now. Okay, now on my truck right here, 
10 amp, 10 amp, 10 amp. This is my trailer, trailer marker lights. This is my left turn signal, this is my right turn signal. What you want to do is you want to take those out, take them right out, and what you'll do, turn your tail light, turn your lights on and your flashers on. <clears throat> with a multimeter or a test light find out which side of each of these has your power on mine my power my power was here here and here on the right side of each fuse so what I did is I put a little uh, fuse tap in on the non-powered side non-powered side over here okay and push the fuse in what that gives me and this wire, this is my, this is, we'll call this my brown wire, going to my marker lights in the uh, plow head, uh, gives me a fused connection to my marker lights. And then on the blinkers, I did the same thing. Uh, this is my right blinker, put it in the non powered side. And now I have a fused connection for my right blinker on my plow and another one for the left blinker on my plow so I have got the from the wiring harness I've got a brown wire for the marker lights uh, purple wire for the right light and a gray wire for the left uh, turn signals okay that's it for the turn signals very easy and it's done I ain't gotta worry about them and we'll come back for the headlights Okay, before we get into the wiring of the relays, let's talk about relays in general. This is a single pole, single pole double throw relay right here. This is a simplified version. This is usually what the pinout is going to look like. Mine were a little different, but yours will probably look like this if you buy them on eBay or something like that. And what you have here is this is simply a switch. This is a low power coil right here. This goes to ground, and ground can look like so. And this is from your switch, however you want to get that. It could be a toggle switch, or it could be, you'll see a couple different ways in which it works here. It could be this, your headlight switch, or, or whatever. What happens here is when you energize this circuit right here, it flips a little electromagnetic uh, coil inside, and right here is your actuator and it'll flip it from 80, 87A, and I'm going to talk about that, I'm going a little backwards right now. Uh, it'll flip it from 87A to 87, okay? Now on this particular relay here, 87A is normally closed. Closed means it's a closed circuit, there are no gaps, like you see in 87. Normally closed means that it's on, okay? So, even without power to it, you have one complete circuit here all the time. You have your battery power, and there'll be a fuse in here. F U S E. There'll be a fuse in here, and you'll have your power going from here through to 87 onto whatever it is that you're powering. The the this circuit here is the second circuit in this particular switch. This is the circuit that controls which one of these terminals gets the power. Once you energize or complete this circuit, okay, this is important that you know that once you complete this circuit, you can always have power here and just temporarily have ground here. Interrupt your ground here and you're going to interrupt the circuit and you'll get back to the 87A. But once you have a circuit here, and there's power going through and this coil is energized that's a coil is energized it's going to bring this lever down to here this position and that will no longer have power going to it your power will go to 87 okay now this is what your pinout will usually look like on those relays and let's get into that was just a quick down and dirty. Uh, there's also one other relay that I used. It's called a single pole single throw. 
and I'll show you that in just a minute. Okay. Uh, yeah, if you screw up while you're doing this, you have to ri you you run the risk of doing what I did and burning out this uh, fuse box. So I had to replace it. It was twenty four dollars. Uh, this on my truck, two thousand suburban, is my headlight relay. What I did with this one, it, what I did with this relay is I simply took it out and laid it right up here and. Uh, actually what I did is I swapped it out. This is a 15 amp relay. I calculated it out. Both my headlights, high beams, I'm using like 9.5 amps. This is a 12 amp relay. It's thinner and it gave me more room to work with. And what I did with this one is I took the, and you, we'll get into this a little bit more in a minute, I took the 85, the 30, and the 86 and just ran wires straight from the term respective terminals into right the fuse block right there because I needed the room because I need to do I need to use this this and the 87 independently I needed to run a wire from this over to this relay and from the 87 on here over to this relay and I'll show you that in just a second Okay, let's go back to this real quick. This wiring harness that I got with the plow also had two other wiring harnesses that hooked into this re this relay, uh, these relay wires, and they went to the front of the vehicle. And what that did is it enabled me to basically take the whole front of my vehicle off and put adapters in for the headlights and run wires in and out from my high beam, low beam, and all this other stuff, and run it all right back to here, okay? And then, of course, run wires all around the whole engine compartment in the front of the vehicle and every, and give me like 14,000 uh, places for it to fail. So, and like I said, that was from a 98, and I was putting it at 2,000. None of the terminals matched up with what I was doing. And I looked on YouTube unsuccessfully to find the easy way to do this, so I came up with it. I'm sure other people have come up with it, but I haven't seen it on eBay, uh, on YouTube. So I may make mistakes on this on the way while I'm explaining it. Uh, I'll try not to, but if I do, I will uh, address that in a minute. I'll do something. <clears throat> okay. So this is the relay from the truck. Relay from the truck. Okay. <clears throat> and that's the one that I took right out of the uh, fuse block. I showed you and I laid it right up on top of those fuses and I ran uh, the 30 wire. Went right back into where the 30 goes on the fuse block. I uh, just ran a jumper wire. The 85 goes right back to where the 85 was on the uh, fuse block, and the 86 goes right back where it ran the jumper, with the uh, right back to in the fuse block where in the fuse block down here, where it was. Now the 87 terminal, okay. So let's explain this a little bit. The 30 is uh, it's going back to the fuse block, but essentially that always has power. So this is your power out to circuit power out now that's the power that's going to the circuit that's why I draw these little dotted lines here so we can different differentiate this now you have your power that's coming in uh, 85 no 86 is your power coming in for this switch this is your coil this is what actuates that little lever there and turns on the uh, either either circuit or this one's like I said normally open and when you supply power to this it'll turn your headlights on when you turn your headlight switch on or you turn your key on in my case the lights come on so that energizes the circuit so we got 86 uh, 85 is uh, it goes to ground and 86 goes to your headlight switch H D 
W. And when your headlights cut, when your when you power your headlights on, it moves this le little lever up to here, so you have power coming out of 87. Okay. Now I'm going to put a little square down here because this is going to represent 87, 87 in the fuse box. This thing right here, 87. And we'll get to that in just a minute. Okay, so those three are wired right directly. The 30, 85, 86 are wired directly into your fuse block. 87 is going to come out and go to the single pole double throw. Double throw simply means that you have it has power coming out from two terminals. 87A is normally closed or on and 87 is uh, your switched power. In this situation, 87A is going to be the truck headlamps. Okay, so I need, I want this switch, when the headlights are on, I want them to power this relay. So 87 is going straight to 30. Now that's the power for the relay, for the power coming out of these two terminals. Okay, it's normally open, I mean it's normally closed on 87A. So 87A okay is going to be a wire running from here back to 80 where 87 would plug in on your fuse block this way when this circuit is not activated what you have is a complete loop here where 87 used to plug in if your relay was just simply plugged in it would be doing the same thing. We've got power power <laughs> you have the power going straight through from 30 to 87 to 30 to 87 A because this is a double throw and back to here so without the plow hooked up your headlights just come on and run like normal okay now what I have here is 85 goes to the plow ground. <laughs> yeah, I'm writing that I'm writing sideways and whatever here. Which is one of these wires okay now the plow itself is grounded through here and all these circuits for the plow are grounded through here because you connect that to the connector harness on the uh, on the plow and there's a wire that runs from the negative terminal where it connects to the plow motor and it goes in through the coils and comes back in up through here to your ground on this wire right here okay so if your plow harness is not plugged in this wire will not be grounded okay and that's what we need to know here so this goes to your plow ground when your plow is not plugged in it's not grounded this wire 86. Let me look at my thing. Uh, also, I used the plow, the other plow wire, the power one. And you just need to identify these. You're going to have four wires. Uh, one's going to be ground, power, high beam, low beam. You need to identify those on your harness to use them respectively in this uh, in this situation. Now 86 is power to, from, I use the power from my plow harness, which I can't remember what color the wire was, uh, power from harness, power from harness, power, black orange, 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 black orange,
actually. Brown. Brown. It's a brown wire. Uh, I use the power from my harness. Uh, just, But it can be any power. You can get it right from the battery if you need to. And I, and I had thought about it. I thought about running. But no, let's not confuse this. Power. Just do power. I use the power from the harness. You can use the power from anywhere. As long as you have power. Okay? So now... What happens here is, uh, should I get into this yet? Okay, we're gonna do that, we're gonna get into this right now. <laughs> okay, so 87, which is normally open, what we wanna do with that is we wanna, we're gonna bring this right over to, yep, right over here to, 30 okay and that's for my high low beams okay so what happens here is although we have constant power to this coil which activates this actuates this switch right here the only time that it's gonna activate that switch to go up to 87 and take the power away from the headlights for the truck is when I plug that ground in because we don't have a complete circuit here until this wire is grounded. So as soon as I plug that cable in, the 9-pin cable, well, both of them have to be plugged in, but as soon as that 9-pin cable is plugged in and the other, the 2-pin for the battery for the plow, um, it creates a circuit here and it flips it from 87 being closed, which is on, and it sent 87A, I'm sorry, being closed, which is on, and it sends the power to 87, which sends the power over to our plow high low beam. Now you'll see here 87A is normally closed. So that's gonna be your low beam. And on this particular uh, wiring harness the low beam is the black wire okay that's the low beam now what we have here is 85 again it's going to be ground you can use that plow ground if you want uh, because the only time you'll be needing to ground this is when the plow is hooked up so you can use the plow ground uh, now the 86 is the wire that I ran all the way into the truck from right here you see runs all the way into the truck goes to the toggle switch goes back to the red wire the red wire connects in here to the fuse box there's a fuse and then you flip if the switch is off there's no current going into that uh, relay flip the switch it triggers the relay which is why they call it trigger you get the power from toggle switch and it energizes the circuit and it flips to 87 which is the high beam and on this wiring harness is the uh, white wire Okay, so that's the whole deal right there. Okay, I should check the time. So your 30 is your distributed power. That's the power that's being distributed to the circuits. 87A is always normally closed, which is on. That's why I wrote on there. 87A normally closed on. 87 normally open off. 87 normally open. When you don't have power, when your truck's off, the switch is down here. It's not making connection. You turn your key on. If you're like me, you turn your key on, your headlight comes on, it activates that switch and it switches it up to 87. And then for this particular one, 87 is going to 30, which is your distributed power. It's distributing power to the circuit that you want it, which is going to, without the plow, 87A, normally closed, which is on, and goes back into the circuit 
uh, the, the fuse block so that you have a complete circuit and your, 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 your lights are on. 86 on this uh, plow truck headlamp switch is the one that activates automatically when you plug the plow in. This terminal's always this terminal's always going to have power. This is your coil. This is your magnetic coil. And this terminal's always going to have power, but it's only going to have a completed circuit when you plug the plow in. When you plug the plow in, it's going to throw that switch from 87A. You're going to have no current going back to your your, your vehicle headlights, it's going to send it over to the plow headlights, plow high low beam. It's automatically going to default to low beam You're using 87A, which is, uh, like I said, the black wire. This is 85, is just a ground. 86 is that toggle switch. And when you flip the toggle switch, it powers that circuit, takes it off from 87A and throws it up to. 87 which is your high beam and I'll take a break for a minute see if I forget anything okay just some end notes as you saw earlier in the video of my truck I have one relay here laying down over the uh, fuses one here laying down over the fuses and one over here laying down over the fuses. I've since wrapped those up in foam so that they don't jostle around. But if you look back or maybe you noticed before, all of those wires, I put heat shrink tubing over all of them. And it took me quite a bit of time, but um, that was the only way to prevent doing what I did with the other fuse boxes. What happened with the other fuse boxes, I was taking this relay out and when I did, a screwdriver rolled down and contacted two of the contacts on there, and it burnt, uh, it burnt a wire all the way through behind here and just disabled my whole truck. You'd think that, of course, this is a fuse block, right? If something shorts out, a fuse should blow. Well, it didn't. I don't know why. <clears throat> uh... So yeah, be very careful when you're doing this. And uh, there's, in my opinion, there's no real reason that, other than big business and big government, uh, that makes you take your whole front end apart. And this could be done in a professional uh, manufacturing kind of process uh, where you wouldn't have to do it, you know, the way that I did it. There's no reason to tear apart your whole front of your vehicle and to have and to spend six hundred dollars on fifty dollars worth of wiring for a wiring harness that goes all around your engine compartment. But hey, uh, I hope this video helps people. If you have any questions, leave comments or I'll try to answer them. And uh, like I said, there's no reason that it shouldn't be this simple. Uh, it could be manufactured this way and it could be implemented just the way I've done it here on a on a, on a manufacturing basis uh, without having to tear your whole vehicle apart. Uh, so it works for me. It's a heck of a lot more convenient and easier than tearing the whole vehicle apart. And like I said, I hope this helps somebody out. Goodbye.